And now I present to you James P. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Is... is that? Is that? Well, I know he's going to cut something. <laughs> he wants to cut something. Of course. Okay. Which uh, would help uh, people. He wants to cut it. I'm not sure what it is right now, but I can assure you, it obviously involves the middle class and the poor. And and not not the rich, of course. That's correct. Don't call Donald Trump the undisputed Republican frontrunner anymore. As Republicans head to Colorado for tonight's third debate, which occurred already, by the way, Ben Carson is ahead nationwide. And Ben Carson is... Um, is... totally... Ridiculous. Right. Donald Trump is much more truthful than Ben Carson. The October 21 25 survey found 26% of Republican primary voters were backing the retired neurosurgeon. That proves just how stupid the teabaggers really are. While the Trump had the support of 22%. The new survey is the first major poll to show Carson overtaking the real estate mogul. Well, could be his soft-spokenness that's winning over people. We know what it is. Rather than content? Oh, race. No. It's race. Religion. That's all it is. Religion? Yeah, but religion is not proven. Well, what the hell do they care? You know, Americans really deserve to be the laughing stock of the world. First I, of all, I'm totally convinced. His supporters are evangelicals and Baptists, etc. He is a Seventh day Adventist. That automatically makes these people start raving mad. It should, because it's all different. You know what I'm saying? They ain't coming from the Bible. See, that's the Any point. one of them. It's, it's, they're, they're all, all different. They're all cults. Yeah. Created by some man or some woman some time ago. Yeah, like Brigham Young uh, with the Mormons, right? Yeah. Claiming that Jesus uh, visited him. And the angel Moroni. Boney Moroni. Boney Moroni came down. Do you do some mashed potato? No. no, he does the alligator. Nah, 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 nah. Remember that? Boney Maroney. Hey, it's perception. Why do they automatically believe Brigham Young's story? Well, they don't. Some people do. <laughs> That's why we're all not. Uh, 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 what the hell are they called now? Mormons. Morons? If we all believed his morons, story, yeah. we'd all be morons. I mean, anybody morons. could... This proves that anyone can start a cult. And have. That's why, uh, again, uh, Seth MacFarlane on Family Guy uh, made fun of um, all these... All organized religion and, and all these yes, cults. Yes. When uh, Peter Griffith started the Church of the Fonz. There you go, yes. Where, where everybody goes in and, and begins with, Hey, well, what about Festivus? Or anything like Festivus that. Festivus for the rest of us. Frank Costanza of Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. Festivus. Mm -hmm. The Aluminum well, Pole. Well, we read uh, last week or something, the, 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 the something Church of Satan something. There was, an, there was another, there's a new uh -huh. church, uh, yeah. a, 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 a satanic church, which is an offshoot of the original one. Well, all I know is they wanted some, uh, they wanted some uh, equal time against the, uh, you know, the Christians. But, they, but they made up their own, they, yeah. they made up their own rules of the church, of the yeah. cults. And it's usually the opposite of what the Bible says. You know what I mean? Yeah. The black mass. And the white mask, yeah. etc. And, and they all have they all have their own made up rules. <laughs> yes. Which yes. is a hallmark of organized religion. Made up rules. Uh, 
Carson had taken the lead in <laughs> Iowa polls last week, and Trump continues to have big leads in New Hampshire and South Carolina. <coughs> Boney Maroney. <coughs> no one else is close. Third in national poll is Senator Marquio Rubio at 8%. Oh, the guy that looks like um, a ventriloquist. The guy that doesn't show up for work. He looks like a ventriloquist dummy. Okay. Mark Rubio. He doesn't like his job. So he doesn't show up yeah. to take votes. Bernie Sanders is, is still doing his job as senator and running. You know, I mean, here's a young kid compared to Bernie Sanders that can't walk and chew gum at the same time. And he wants to be the big guy in the nation. You see? Next, our former Florida governor, Jeb Bush, and former business executive, Carly Fiorina. The old horse face. With 7%. <coughs> the 10 leading Republican contenders will debate for two hours starting at 8 p.m. That was uh, the CNBC debate, which just occurred. Who were the moderators for the Republican debate? Second one. That that was the one we just had. That was the third one. But, I believe. I CNBC. Mean, CNBC also uh, continued to. That's the one they had all the troubles with. They didn't like right. those three moder moderators: the woman and the two guys. Right. Now after that one. They didn't has, want those questions. After that has there been another? Uh, there will be one on Tuesday. And I, and I wonder who's moderating it. Next week. Next Rush? Week. Wait a second. This one will be on the Fox Business Channel. Oh. Which I'm not sure right here in Optimum Land which channel it is. Yeah, we're, we're in Optimum Land, yeah, yeah, the company, the uh, provider, internet provider and... Correct, yes. The cable provider. Trump had questions about the polls Tuesday. Some of these polls coming out, I don't quite get it. He told MSNBC's Morning Joe, he said... He was surprised in Iowa. And the other polls, as you know, in other states are extraordinarily, actually, I would have thought we were doing much better. I think we actually are doing much better. Hey, when, uh, when a major network has Hillary Clinton light years ahead of Bernie Sanders in the polls, there is a lot to be suspicious of. Uh. He also insisted he's not thinking of getting out. I'm in it to the end. I'm in it to the end. He could be buoyed by the finding of the nationwide poll that seven out of ten Republican primary voters said it is far too early for them to make a definite decision on a candidate. Yeah, Bernie's got to start getting tough, man. Go right for the jugular vein. No more Mr. Perfect well, you don't have to go to the jugular vein with Hillary. But, but these networks are claiming that yes, Hillary is light years ahead of Bernie Sanders. This is not good. All you have to do is know about her, you know, who she will defend. And what is the problem with black Americans? Don't they know Bernie Sanders marched? With the civil rights leaders? Bernie is not as influential as a Democrat that is at the top. The same thing with uh, with unions. Unions benefit yes. much more with Bernie Sanders than they will ever do with the Hillary American Clinton. American people, as Gary Null says often, they don't get it. If you vote for the third party, they will win. But they don't vote for them because they don't think they're going to win. And there is the problem. That's why Nader only got 250 or 80,000 votes. Nader, what, Nader was the most honest and truthful Correct. 
of the whole bunch. You mean yes. when Nader was, ran with the Green Party? Yes. Yes. That's the problem. They don't want to vote for what they consider, perceive, to be a loser. Do you, rem you remember what Bernie Sanders says when he first became uh, mayor of Burlington, Vermont? No. He won by like 10 votes, something like that? 10 votes? He barely, by the skin of his nose, defeated well, what his What the opponent. hell? He says he got a lot of flack from the established... Uh, oh, uh, uh, um, established politics mm -hmm. in Vermont. Mm -hmm. You know, the old... Um, two-party system hands out yeah. for the big donations. Well, what would you expect? You, you know, know the, uh, the, the official them gave him a hard time when he ran for Burlington's mayor. Of course. And just like with Jesse Ventura, he just barely won. Because the people are that gullible and naive. It's like when your team wins. You feel as though you participated in their winning. Pal, you did nothing. Hey, when the Mets, when the New, when the New York Mets beat the Chicago Cubs to win the National League pennant for 2015, mm. automatically the New York fans got very boisterous, loud, and obnoxious, and arrogant like they usually do. They were going with the winner. They were talking a lot of shit, and then lo and behold, the Kansas City Royals swept them. Well, as I understand it, swept them. During the season, they lost seven games to the Royals. Yeah. I so mean, they were, you know, I mean, they weren't anywhere near. Yeah, their ability, obviously. So they, so they were lucky to even get one game. Well, they were lucky to win the National League pennant. Yeah, well, they didn't face the Royals yet. But they didn't face the Royals <laughs> yet. Well, what For the I World mean, Series, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, um, well, the same thing with. When the Red Sox started the season, they got all these sluggers, all these these new players, and, uh -huh. and all the sports experts says, oh, it's going to be the Red, Red Sox, Sox this year, year baby. Uh, yeah, baby. Everybody was all psyched up, and they fizzled out. You know, it's like, uh, well, with politics, people just don't get it that business as <coughs> usual, a two-party system... Uh, uh, people are not the way to go. They're not really for you fighting for the little guy. Look. 100%. They're there not is really... a big problem in America with people. The adaptive supporters. People are really fucked up. Okay? They are always down on themselves. They don't, in any way, shape, or form, see themselves as a billionaire. The billionaire is always better than them. Okay? Whether it's conscious or subconscious, well, when it's I, there. When I was a kid, when I was a kid and I worked for the old Roy Rogers, you know, Rose hey, hey. Camp, and I had a stupid uniform on, polyester uniform. I was, um, well, I think I was over 18. I was working for them. And uh, all the people that came in for lunch, uh, all the, uh, the, the, the females, the customers that came in, you know, uh, good looking ones that were all dressed up like they work in an office. Yeah. Nobody would give me the time of day because uh -huh. because because you were I worked at Roy Ra I was a fast food restaurant employee so I was not worthy that's great of of their acknowledging me that's great you know what I mean people put you in a they pigeonhole you they put you in a class in a classification so wow. even though you have a job you know, if you're a porter, man, which used to be called janitor in the old days. How about a shoe shiner? 
and you're working full time doing that, all right, you're working full time. So nobody's going to accuse you of being a lazy bum, but you are a porter, or you're a fast food worker, or, Why do you think? or you work in a factory. You are not going to receive the respect that people that have a college degree work in an office. Why do you think garbage men would rather be seen as sanitation engineers? They make more money than okay. a lot of people in the office. The people you just mentioned. Yeah. But they're looked down upon. Yes. Elaine from Seinfeld didn't want to date someone because he was a garbage man. Meanwhile, he's in a union, he's making money hand over fist with the benefits and the pension and bada bee bada boo and the great health care and the coverage, are much better than any of the jabronis that Elaine dated from the office, uh -huh. but the stigma, he is a sanitation person, he's not, a garbage man. he's low, he's beneath. That's correct. Same thing with... A Dunkin' Donuts employee, you're beneath. Elvis Presley sang about it years and years ago. Poor boy, poor boy, poor boy, but I am lonesome and I am blue. But I could never be a poor boy as long as I got a dolly like you. That's a nice song. But, but, well, but at least the dolly in that song took him on even though he was a poor boy see saw something beyond yes, yes. his um his his uh um, status. subordinate occupation uh, status yeah so you know damn well that a homeless person Duh. with college degrees that end up <laughs> homeless you know they're they're even worth less and they're more invisible as a human being than the fast food worker but they, this is how humanity is. They they judge you. They stick you in a in a little pigeonhole. And as long as you stay there, hey, they worship you. But once you get out of that, what's the old saying? That they love you again, right? No, they don't like you anymore when you're going downhill. When you're going down, be kind the to old, the people yeah, you meet on the way up. Because you're going to meet them on the way down. You meet the same people on, on the, the way, way down. down. Now, yes. That's why I say, you know, when I used to be in, involved with uh, online dating, I would say, love is not about the man's, the man's income or what kind of car he drives. Love is not a sales job mm. that with a quota. As, soon, as long as you produce, uh -huh. people love you. Once you stop producing, people stop loving you. You know what I mean? It, it, it is not a sales job with a quota. It, it does not, it should not um, determine you as a human being. It should not, um, yeah, help me out here, it should not uh, 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 judge you as, judge your worth as a human being. In capitalism, we <clears throat> measure people by their wealth. Monetary possession. Simple as that. Income, monetary possession. Yeah. Simple as that. Correct. You you drive a junky car, mm -hmm. the people make fun of you. You drive a great car, then people accept you. Your job, this, that, and the other thing. You know, it's really very unfair. You know. The uh, rise and durability of Trump and Carson have befuddled the political elites and have become the uh, defining dynamic as they and eight others take the stage at the Coors Event Center at the University of Colorado in Boulder. That was already, all right, we had that debate, right? Carson plans to take a deliberately gentle approach to his flamboyant foe. Think about it. Parents, children, employees, they don't want a boss or a president who's going to fly off the handle and throw, <coughs> excuse me, insults at people. Why not? Because of Carson's popularity, some Republicans say 
Taking him down will require precision and care. I don't think that you need to attack him. You just need to examine him. While he is an awesome, has an awesome bedside manner for a sick patient, you really wouldn't ask a politician to do brain surgery. Would you ask a brain surgeon to fix the country? <laughs> Latino advocacy groups joined by Hollywood celebrities and others are calling on NBC to disinvite the Trump from his number seven appearance on Saturday Night Live. Tonight, by the way. Tonight. Oh, he will be on Saturday Night Live. So, so Saturday Night Live decided to go with Trump. Yes, they Continue. did. Continue. And there'll be one skit where he has a huge what? head of hair. Oh, like an exaggerated. <laughs> really exaggerated. Somebody, uh, the other day I heard him say that uh, they referred to his hair as uh, having a fox on top of his head. Oh, yeah, that was stand-up comedy, and Trump did not smile or laugh. Yeah, yeah, he's sitting in the audience, man. Yes, he didn't yeah. say, oh, yeah. That was Seth MacFarlane. No, no, it was somebody else. It was, a ro it was like a, he was roasting him, you know? And yeah, Obama was, was sitting... Yeah, Seth MacFarlane. Obama was sitting right there. He was on the dais, yeah. And Obama was cracking up yeah. about the fox on his head. <laughs> we are appalled! That you would enable Trump's hateful speech for nothing more than a ratings ploy. The National Hispanic Leadership Agenda said in a letter to SNL, executive producer Lorne Michaels, another factor in the growing outcry may be that it is exceptionally rare for an active presidential candidate to host the show. Presidential and vice presidential <clears throat> candidate cameos have long been woven into the fabric of SNL, but the last time a candidate hosted amid an active campaign was Democratic long shot Al Sharpton in December 2003. Trump has his facts wrong when he claims he pressured Ford Motor Company into scrapping plans to build a plant in Mexico. Ford's chief executive said on Tuesday. Facts are stubborn things, and at Ford we are proud of the facts. Mark's fee Mark Field said, unfortunately we suspect the facts are getting lost in the politics. Trump tweeted on Sunday that because of his constant criticism, Ford had decided to cancel plans to build a plant in Mexico. Field said Ford's decision to move heavy truck production from Mexico to Ohio was made in 2011. Hundreds of students, parents, and other concerned residents of the Sioux City, Iowa protested Trump's appearance at a local high school saying the GOP presidential candidate's rhetoric about immigrants violates the school's anti-bullying policy. Organizer Ishmael Valadez Va said Trump's characterization of Mexican immigrants as rapists and criminals should have led school officials to bar him from speaking at the West Side High School. Yeah. Well, you're talking about Republicans. So they, you shouldn't be sh too shocked. Any, with any of them. Valadez said that as many as 500 protesters gathered outside the school ahead of Trump's appearance on Tuesday evening. Sioux City Schools officials said the event is not school sponsored. You think maybe the media is not uh, targeting and focusing on Ben Carson's many lies because uh, because he's black? 
Well, <coughs> they are targeting in on some of the lawyers right now. CNN is, and uh, the trouble is, he is dismissing them, and he is blaming the media for witch hunting him. Oh, like like they all cried uh, during the last debate, uh, MSNBC debate. I mean, uh, C CNBC. CNBC yeah, right. debate. They're picking <coughs> us. They're picking on the Republicans. They're targeting us. But the point is, uh, his um, statements on archaeology and, and history and religion are, are all unfounded and, and, and nonsense. That is correct. And some of them are lies. And his background. Outright lies. And his credentials, like what with the West Point. Um, and that doesn't even go to his issue. His defense of his religious ideas as coming from the Bible because they don't. Religious ideas are just an opinion. It's just a perception. It's not proven. Well, they keep saying it coming from the, the Bible. But, but if you lie about your background, now that's proven. Well, he's even saying that those people don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> not if you can prove it. Out of ten people, one person said that, eh, maybe, maybe, uh, you know, he says what he says was true or whatever. The other nine huh? say it wasn't. Maybe? You just, yeah. you research it and you prove it. What do you mean, maybe? Well, he's just agreeing with the guy. Oh, boy. Instead of making a big deal out of it. How are we doing on time? We're ended. Done. Oh, ended. yeah. We are Finito. done. Oh, yeah. Time sure flies when you're having a great show. Very invigorating indeed. Thank you for joining us for this week's Progressive Discussions. Uh, this, of course, is the end of uh, the last video segment. Now that we have to pr present our shows in parts. And um, I will try my best to end every video segment with uh, William Hamilton Morrow III's promo. I will see if I could be done. If it could be done, great. So we'll see you next time. I'd say I'm going to give it a dozen bells for a very uh, smooth, well done show. All right. See you next time. I wonder if Ronnie's hearing those bells. Ronnie? Yeah, he's on a cruise ship. Oh, I think they only use those bells in, in hotel lobbies. Ah. I don't think they use it on a cruise ship. Don't they use some kind of bell? I don't know. No, like, like a... Like oh, a purser? Siemens bell, like a, a ship bell. Siemens? No, not that kind of Siemens. Oh. Uh, uh, they have a different bell All right. on a ship, you know, like on farms, they use the triangle, you know, come and get it, uh, and get it. or they use the cow bell, which I could get a cow bell, but it kind of has like a country bumpkin sound, I, so it's, it's, uh, I don't really like it. Cool, man, cool. Yeah. You like the, you, you've, do you notice the jingle bells are different than the hotel bell or is the hotel bell of course there it's a different sound right yeah, of course. yeah all right we'll see you this has been a mega life 21 production hi this is william h morrow the best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to newsletter censored with your gift to support this work the newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hi, I'm William Morrow. Wake up, people, because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need 
newsletter censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye.